Hello student, let me present you another fascinating problem. In this problem, what is given is that a bead begins to slide on a helical path or helical wire. What is a helix? A helix is uh, nothing but if you have seen a spring and if the spacing between the adjacent loops of the spring is constant, then that particular distance is called the pitch and this uh, spring like path is called the helical path right so this bead is going on this helical wire and it is gaining some velocity but due to the friction force eventually the speed of this particle will become constant and you have to also determine the speed v naught right and uh, not not the speed but the speed is given but you have to determine the coefficient of friction between the wire and the bead so at this uh, point, you must pause the video and you should give this question a fair try and the fair try should not be, you know, five minute, two minute. You should give this question a decent try and after that you should watch the solution, right? So now coming to the solution part, if you see this uh, whole motion in the front view, right? If you have a vertical spring just in front of you, you will not uh, see the path like this, but you will see a path something like this, right? You must have seen this kind of representation of a spring in some of the textbooks at least, right? You will watch this kind of path. Now try to visualize why you will see this kind of path, right? Exactly. This is going to be the front view and the top view will be purely circular. So here we can say that this bead is going in the circular path in the horizontal plane and in the vertical plane, it is moving down an inclined surface of fixed inclination. The angle of inclination with the horizontal is going to remain constant, right? So let me make another diagram to help this visualize. Let's say we have taken a small part of the path, right? So very small path, part of the path is taken here, right? And the projection of this path on the horizontal plane is represented here, right? And if we just try to make a plane through this whole path, this plane will be making some angle with the horizontal and that is the plane we are talking about. It, in this line right so this these are the lines that are representing the plane so if you see that uh, the relation is such that for every angle rotated in the horizontal plane there will be some fixed distance that the bead will go in the vertically downward direction right so if we have rotated by angle 2 pi or 360 degree in the horizontal plane one revolution is complete and in that one revolution the distance uh, moved in the vertically downward direction by the particle will be equal to the pitch and that is what is shown in this figure of course you can uh, be confused that the particle is going down and then going up it is not like that the particle is always going down this is just uh, 3d representation so maybe it is not very accurate so this point is not actually above this point but it is below the point right so you can probably visualize and if we just stretch this wire right and make this a straight line but in this plane right so this whole length is represented in this diagram right this whole length is nothing but the total wire length from this point to this point right and the whole distance traveled in the horizontal plane right this horizontal displacement or horizon horizontal length traveled will be equal to circumference of this horizontal circle right so this whole length is going to be equal to 2 pi into radius right and the distance the vertical displacement will be represented by this vertical line and that is going to be equal to pitch and this is the angle of the plane this plane that this particle will be going down right and of course this is a simplification of course it is not moving in a straight line but this path will be curved 
and here it is given as a curve but uh, this part will also serve you in some way that will help you problem uh, solve the problem so now let me come to the problem part here so just uh, do not try to you know read all the text at once and just try to follow me what i am trying to say here so if we make the free body diagram of this bead at this moment here what will be happening that we can take the component of gravitational force one component along this uh, mg sine uh, along the plane that is going to be mg sine alpha this angle is alpha so of course from here we can write down the tan alpha will be equal to pitch by this whole circumference length 2 pi r right so we know the value of alpha the components of mg are taken one normal reaction will be balancing this uh, mg cos alpha of course this bead is not going in this direction or this direction and there is no curve in this direction also the curve is basically along this direction so this path will have a curvature and that curvature's center will be coming towards you from this point right so there will be some normal reaction which will be providing the centripetal force because there is a curvature here right so just uh, try to visualize that uh, uh, that uh, at this particular point there is going to be a curvature and the center of curvature is going to come towards you at this point right so this normal reaction direction is not in the plane of your screen but it is coming towards you it is perpendicular to the plane right so we have taken two normal reactions one component of the normal reaction is balancing this mg cos alpha and one component n2 is providing uh, the centripetal force and of course uh, since there is some relative velocity there is slipping going on so the friction force will be acting opposite to the motion because the particle is moving in this direction the velocity is along the tangential direction right it is moving on a circular path not exactly circular but curve path and it will have some speed along the tangent which is this direction right so the net normal reaction is going to be the resultant of these two normal which are at angle 90 degree as shown here so we had to determine the normal reaction here and of course the one component of normal is already known mg cos alpha we have to determine the n2 and this n2 part here it must have been n2 let me correct it this n2 part just a moment this is nothing but n2 right so this n2 will provide the centripetal force so n2 will be equal to mv square by radius of curvature of this part right now we are uh, left uh, with nothing but determination of radius of curvature of helix which itself which in itself is a very good problem to solve right to determine the radius of curvature of a helical path right now how do we determine this uh, radius of curvature and let us see here this particle has a circular motion about this vertical axis that we had already seen that uh, about this vertical axis let's say the particle is moving with angular velocity omega dash right and in the horizontal plane in the small time interval the displacement angular displacement is let's say d theta and in the same time uh, the radius of curvature actual radius of curvature will be along this point somewhere here and this whole part this whole part is going to be equal to radius of curvature actual radius of curvature r dash into d phi and this this angle this small angle d phi is in the plane is in this green plane right you can see that this is in the green plane and this angle is d phi right and the projection of this length is this particular length right as you can see here that uh, if we take if we take the angular velocity at this moment it is moving in this plane so if we take the rotation in this plane the angular velocity will be perpendicular to the plane of rotation so the angular velocity about 
about this particular axis right which is making angle alpha because you can see here that this angle is making angle alpha right so this is angle alpha so of, of course perpendicular to this plane the axis of rotation for this small angular displacement d5 we can say that axis is making angle alpha with the vertical and the angular velocity is omega right so this small angular displacement d5 can be written as angular velocity omega times dt right or we can uh, say that this omega is nothing but d5 by dt and this omega dash about the vertical axis is nothing but d theta by dt so these are the two equation now we can see that this whole length is going to be on this green plane and the length is going to be shown here on this high uh, on this hypotenuse line right r dash d5 and the component of this uh, red line here the component of this red part here the actual path is shown here on this circular path right so this is equal to r d theta from here we can uh, equate this r d theta or the base will be equal to hypotenuse into cos alpha right and there are these two equations from these two equations and also there is one equation that is written here what does this indicate this indicates that the actual angular velocity of the particle is along the vertical so the direction the direction we have taken uh, which is making angle with alpha with the vertical this particular angular velocity omega is nothing but the component of actual angular velocity omega dash along this direction so we can take the component of angular velocity along any other direction right so this angular velocity omega will be equal to omega dash into cos alpha and if we solve these uh, three and four uh, this one two three four equation just use all of them just divide by equation one and two substitute the values and you will get the result r dash equal to i'm sure you will be able to uh, get through the calculation of this part this is not going to be very difficult i've tried to save some uh, space here so so i've just uh, given arrows that you can use this four equation and using this four equation you will be able to get the value of r dash as r into sec square alpha and the sec square alpha can be written as 1 plus tan square alpha and the value of tan alpha is this much right so from here we get the famous uh, radius of curvature uh, equation for this helical path that is equal to radius of this uh, coil right or or the or this uh, horizontal uh, you know uh, projection radius r into 1 plus pitch square by 4 pi square r square right so this is the radius of curvature now we are left with nothing but simple calculation we can put the value of r dash in this equation n2 and we'll get the value of normal reaction as n1 square plus n2 square so after substituting all these values we'll get be getting normal reaction as this much right and at the terminal condition what will be happening here at the terminal condition or when the velocity or uh, when the speed becomes constant if the speed becomes constant the tangential acceleration should be zero so along the path along this line the mg sine alpha will be balanced by the friction force and the value of friction force at this point will be since this for friction force at this moment also is kinetic friction it is going to be mu times net normal reaction which is n right so we'll be just balancing mu n equal to mg sine alpha and we'll substitute the value of n here and we'll get the value of mu right and here the alpha means this so i hope you like this question and if you did please uh, share this video with your friend thank you